Today on Ham Radio Q&A, I open the mailbag and answer your questions, so please keep watching for more. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Well, first off, did everyone have a great field day? I know after getting home and reading the comments online and in the forums that there was a little bit of grumbling about the 1D or home stations on, that were using commercial power. Well, there certainly was a, lot, a large amount of activity from the big home stations, and then it made it difficult for you know the field and the QRP stations to survive. But you know, field day has always been a train wreck on 20 and 40 meters. So it takes a bit of skill and finesse, especially if you're working QRP or with limited resources on those bands. I think the rule waiver was a good thing this year, but I believe the league will most likely make a different or more equitable adjustment if it is going to be required for next year's event. One thing to consider with field day is that it's not a contest, although it is treated as such. The purpose is to show off our emergency preparedness skills as amateur radio operators, and one thing to consider is how suboptimal conditions will affect the performance of getting a signal out. And those conditions could also entail high amounts of RF activity or QRM on the bands. So, you know, if field day left you frustrated, please use this as a learning experience so you can better adapt and be ready for the next time. Well, with that said, uh, I did receive a few questions on my Field Day 2020 video that I want to catch up on. First off, Jeff asks, what program did you use to show the locations of your contacts? Not the state map, but the red lines to each of the contact locations. Well, those were generated um, with an online service called qsomap.org. This website allows you to upload an ADI file from your logging program and generate a variety of maps to help visualize your contacts from a contest, activation, or some type of special event. While the service is free, I highly recommend you donate a few bucks if you find the service useful, as the developers have invested quite a bit to make this highly useful service available to all amateur radio operators. Eric says, do you think the dust storm and that's the Sahara dust storm, you know, generated from North Africa, caused the noise on 40 and 80 meters. Lots of operators, including me in Missouri, were affected by it. Well, there's a quite a bit of static on the lower bands, and I know there was some rain in the lower Midwest that weekend, but I wasn't sure if the dust storm was affecting my propagation as it hadn't reached Wisconsin by field day time. But Eric then sent me a link that showed some research in how dust storms create lightning from static electricity. And I'll put, that in, I'll put that link in the description below. It's a short and fascinating read, and I suppose that even though sand is an insulator, you know, much like you would generate a static charge by rubbing a glass rod with a silk cloth, wind blowing against sand particles in the upper atmosphere could do exactly the same thing. So I guess, you know, going forward, I'm going to have to read more about this and see if that was the case. But, you know, that was a, it, definitely that could have been a possibility for a lot of our noise on field day weekend. A couple of people asked about the little camping trailer. Gary says, hi Michael, did you make your camper or is it a factory built? Well, the little camper is a TC Teardrops 5x8 camping trailer. They're custom built in my hometown of Wausau, Wisconsin. So, you know, I've gotten to know the owner pretty well. Uh, this is the third year we've used it camping and I'll tell you that I'm not gonna switch back to a tent. It will go just about anywhere and fit almost any campsite. Plus, I can have it fully loaded so that all I need to do is, you know, fill the cooler with food and grab a change of clothes and I'm, and I'm on the road. I'll, I'll put their website link in the video description below for TC Teardrops if you're interested in more information. Well, wrapping up on field day, I forgot to mention that Flambeau River State Forest is a Parks on the Air entity, K4349. So I'll also be uploading all my uh, contacts to this site, so everyone will also receive POTA credit. Moving on, the 80 meter off center fed dipole antenna was an integral part of my field day setup this year, and I did receive a few questions about it, including this one from Soda95. I see a lot of people saying that you need a four to one current ballon for this and warning not to use a voltage ballon for an off center fed dipole. 
but nobody seems to have a clear explanation as to why or what happens if a voltage ballon is used. Okay, briefly, a voltage ballon delivers voltages equally but in opposite phases along the radiator. A current ballon delivers current equally in opposite phases along a radiator. So that's the main difference between a voltage and a current ballon. A voltage ballon may be a good choice for dipole antennas where the radiators are of equal lengths because if they aren't symmetric or equal, then common mode currents may occur. A, common, a current ballon is good for filtering out common mode currents because it's going to block uh, the, that, that common mode um, energy from coming back down to the feed line. So it works quite well with asymmetrical antennas like the off-center fed dipole uh, or even um, an in-fed in antennas. Our current ballon works great for in-fed antennas too. Uh, you can use a voltage ballon uh, with an off-center fed dipole, but then you're also going to need ferrite chokes on your feed line to limit common mode interference. Using a current ballon eliminates the need for the chokes. Bill says, oh, does the same formula work through 40 through 10? Yes, it does. If you don't have the space for an 80 meter dipole or off-center fed dipole, you can make the 40 meter version just as easy. To calculate for a 40 meter dipole, use the, the same formula, 468 divided by seven megahertz. Overall length is gonna be about 67 feet, so you're gonna split the two wires into segments of one third and two thirds in length. You'll still use that four to one current ballon at the feed point. Peter asks, what antenna tuner are you using? Well, for a long time, I've been using an MFJ945C portable tuner that I picked up at a ham fest a long, long time ago. Uh, this tuner, you know, it's, it's served me quite well over the years. Um, it's a great tuner. It's got a very wide range. It's, it's kind of big. It's kind of heavy. And it's a manual tuner. So um, I've been looking to upgrade uh, my portable kit with an automatic tuner. So I recently purchased this um, LDG Z11 Pro 2 Auto Tuner. As you can see, you know, it's quite a bit more compact uh, than, the, than the MFJ tuner, a little bit lighter weight, and um, it gives me that extra convenience of using an automatic tuner versus a um, manual tuner. Plus then I don't have to fiddle with the controls when I want to change bands when using my, my new off-center fed dipole or the Chameleon Impasse 2. Now uh, with, the, uh, with the Z11 Pro 2, you can put a battery pack inside the unit, but for convenience, what I did was I just uh, took a 2.5 millimeter power plug, uh, put it on a nine volt battery connector, and I used this as my power support, as a power um, uh, supply. Uh, the tuner really requires very little power oper for operation, and um, I didn't want to mess around with opening the case or tapping the power off the main battery, so the little 9 volt battery works great. You know, I can do a video uh, comparing uh, the LDG with a manual tuner if anyone's interested in seeing that. Oh, let me know. Cliff asks, you know, do the ends of each leg of the antenna need to be the same angle uh, from the feed point? Well, no, they don't. You can deploy the off-center fed dipole in a variety of configurations. Uh, the most common is the inverted V, and then, you know, then the flat top configuration, if you have, if you have uh, enough support to make it flat top. Um, I had it as a V uh, in, my, in my field test, but for the actual field day, uh, the short segment was sort of flat with the center conductor, and then the long side was in more of a V configuration. This was mainly due to uh, the, av the availability I had for adequate tree support for that long segment. And this leads us into the next question. Since we're talking about portable antennas and such, Brent comments on the, the, the Chameleon MCOM 3 a review vid video I did last year. Uh, do you have to use all of the 75 feet of wire uh, for the antenna so a small campsite may not uh, be enough room? Well, this can certainly be a concern if you don't have the space, especially if you're set up in a small campsite or park. And you can let the wire on the end of a uh, on the on the end of an N-fed antenna, you know, droop down or dangle a bit, or even dog leg it out in another direction so it fits the space you have available. Yeah, you know, the only requirement is that you just don't let that that element touch the ground. 
Any non-standard deployment though may affect your radiation pattern or SWR a bit, so you know, be sure to check things out with a meter and make adjustments as necessary. Well, that's it for my field day after action report and follow up uh, for this month's questions uh, that you may have. Did you have any field day lessons learned? Well, please share them in the comments below. Maybe uh, what happened to you can help out someone else. I'll filter through them and we'll keep that conversation going. Maybe one will even show up on our next Your Questions Answered video. But coming up for July, you know, I have a pretty active month ahead of me. Starting off, we've got the 13 Colonies special event uh, going on right now. And um, hey, I'm about halfway through um, well, working it. It's been a lot of fun, especially on 40 meters, uh, hitting those stations out on the East Coast. So. Um, it's been a lot of fun, you know, breaking through those pileups with my little station. And coming up, we do have a couple of camping trips planned uh, later this month, so you might even see another activation video. And finally, I'm challenging myself to ride 500 miles this month on a bicycle. I got a slow start this season with the pandemic and poor weather, so I need to pile on the miles. Who knows, you know, maybe we'll get a ham radio bicycle video out of it. But before we end, I do have a question for you. One of the methods of support of this channel is the advertising revenue generated on YouTube. And I'm not going to lie to you, the ad revenue I receive is significant enough that it pays for expenses and production costs and helps invest in gear that I use in making the videos. But I know this can cause a suboptimal viewing experience, especially if the ads pro uh, keep progressively showing in the middle of the video. If I were to limit the number or frequency of the ads on a video, would you be willing to support the channel through either direct donation or maybe with Patreon? You know, with the Patreon model, I could offer early ad-free releases of each video and also, you know, more behind the scenes content that you wouldn't, wouldn't normally see. Let me know in your thoughts, either in the comments below or in a quick little poll I'll just throw up in the corner of the screen. No matter what, I do thank you for watching these videos and your continued support of this channel. But for more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. And like I said, your support of this channel drives the production of future videos, so if you like this video, give me that big thumbs up, check out some of the recommended videos, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Pressing subscribe is your way to be notified when a future video is released. Well, that's it for my time, uh, uh, this time. I'm Michael, keep an eye on VBR, have a great day, and 73.